Hey guys, PolarBridge right here with another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up the Dark Comet Rat and how to port forward and all that good good stuff. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and actually we're going to go start and type in cmd in the search bar, enter, hit IP config. So you basically the only two things you need to remember is your IPv4 address. You're going to need that for later. Default gateway is what we're going to need right now. For me, this is mine and yours may be different. So once you get that number, just go ahead and go to your internet browser. Type it in right here. Hit enter. And you should pop up into your router login or modem login. And you just want to go ahead and log in. For me, uh, Mine is just admin with no password. Yours may be different. You can always, Google is your best friend, so go ahead and use it. Uh, so I'm not going to go, I'm not going to log in from right here. I'm essentially going to go right here because it shows my IP and whatnot. So, and usually you want to go under advanced and either want to look for virtual server or port forwarding, either one. They both work this just the same. So for this, I'm going to use virtual server. You want to go ahead and enter the name of your whatever you want to call it. I call it Dark Comet One because I have different. I have multiple servers actually spreading, as you can say. Uh, application name you don't have to worry about, but for the ports right here, you want to make sure uh, you can make up a random port. I just use uh, uTorrent, and apparently under settings you can hit random port and it'll create a port. I recommend like 200, 300, or even 3554, whatever. Just make it you know something. You know, not very common, I guess you could say. And for protocol, you want to make sure it, it's both right here. Uh, then for the IP address, you want to go ahead and go back here, copy your IP address. If you have a D-Link, you can see the different computers connected. Make sure your computer is selected. I'm not going to pop it up. And I will see one of that. Inbound filter, you want to make sure that's allow all. And once you got that all set up, you want to go ahead and hit save settings. And you're done port forwarding slash virtual server, if whatever you choose to use. Next, you want to go ahead and go to noip.com. You want to go ahead and make an account. So next, you want to go ahead and go to noip.com. Make an account on here. And once you get your account all activated, uh, you want to go ahead and sign in. my account and you want to go ahead and add a host once you're logged in uh, host name it can be uh, whatever just you know make sure you can remember it then for this I recommend using like no IP .biz, no IP info or org one of those three and just for an example I don't know polar bear j21 or something you know make it up to whatever sooner as you remember it and make sure your IP, you can always just go to IP chicken or what's my IP, usually it'll automatically put your IP in here. And you can assign it to a group if you really want to, but you don't have to, and just hit create host, and it'll create a host. And once that's done, you want to go ahead and return to no IP homepage, go ahead and hit download. Go ahead and download the latest version. If you have Max or Linux, there's versions down here for you. Uh, once that's done downloading, you can go ahead and open it up, like so. You'll get a login screen usually, and you just hit your login info for no IP. You want to go ahead and select your host, whatever host name you made. And make sure all these are checkmarked. If they're not checkmarked, you can always Google and figure out why they're not working, or even go under help. So now you got your no IP. DUC is set up and your port forwarding set up. Now to actually set up your RAT to get it ready. So go ahead and open up your wherever you extracted your uh, dark comment, you know, stuff and go ahead and open up the .exe. You'll get a screen. Well, you won't get this first. You'll get some, uh, you know, notices and uh, agreements. You just have to hey, agree. They're a pain in the ass. Make sure you check mark boxes so they don't pop up every time you start up your server or your dark comment. So once you get in, you want to go ahead and hit the down arrow here. You want to go ahead and hit servo module, full editor. For this, I wouldn't recommend using a security password, but you can if you really want to. I don't recommend it. It just basically 
uh, for a user to connect to you, they had to have this password from basically to, you'll see them in this list right here. So process new text, you want to go ahead and hit that a few times, doesn't matter. And then for server ID, this will be the server ID that they actually connect and you'll see how they connected. Like you can, you know, if you have like a music, you want to like basically use the spread, you can just, you know, name it like music or whatever. And profile name, this will be your saved profiles right here. So music or whatever you want to name it. Process hijacking only uses if you're not going to encrypt your server. I wouldn't recommend it since I just never used it. I always usually create my server. Next, you want to hit network settings. So for your IP slash DNS, you want to go ahead and go back to here and select your host or whatever. Get that name, write it down, and put it here. And that port number you used in port forwarding, you want to go ahead and put it into here and then click add. They'll add it like so. I wouldn't recommend doing this. If you want to test it on yourself, just use this. This is your local host. And obviously put your port here. Next, you want to go ahead and hit module startup. Make sure this is selected. And I drop file in. It doesn't really matter. I usually put it into probably Windows, System32 app, or even Start or something. Uh, for this, I'll just use System32. This basically is the folder under System32 that will be in. So I'll make a folder like this, msdc, and the process name will be right here. You might want to change this to like like Microsoft Update or something, you know, so it sounds legit. Your startup key name, if they're smart, they usually go and start and hit, you know, type in system and they can figure out which process they want to select startup. You might want to name it something legit. Like, you know, you can also use this. I wouldn't recommend it since uh, it's the default name. Make it like, you know, Adobe Updater or, you know, I don't know, something common like Microsoft Update. I don't know. Some, you know, you can just go under start and look under your program to see what's default. Uh, I'm not going to change it for now since this is just a tutorial. Make sure this is not selected. Don't select that. It will basically melt your server or whatever after execution and I don't know. It just doesn't work out. Change the file creation date. You definitely want to do this so it looks like it's been on their computer for a while. I might make it like, you know, maybe two years older or something, maybe a year older. I wouldn't go as far as 2007 because people will get newer computers, you know, and they'll see that like, huh, I just got this computer and it has something from 2007. Yeah. But change it to something, you know, legit. Or since installation, make sure this is checked. It will always come back if you have this checked. Unless they, you know, get rid of it with their antivirus, then it won't, but yeah. So drop file attribute, I usually select both. You don't have to. This explains, you know, what what they do. Uh, install message, you don't have to do this. You can, like, you know, if you want to say, like, uh, let's say they're running, I don't know, if you're doing, like, uh, hacking, like, if you want to bind your server to, like, an injector for a game or whatever, you know, like, you can say successfully injected or something like that and just you can choose like no no icon or something you know and change the title whatnot and you can also test it whatever here I'll test it and see it'll say like this successfully injected you can just make it like you know injection and test it and I'll say you see successfully injected and they hit okay you don't have to use that but you can if you really want to Next, you want to go to Module Shield. You want to make sure all four of these are checked. You want to make sure your has a startup from msconfig. Uh, if they have thirty, it's only for thirty-two bit only, but you know, helps. Persistent process, you know, it always comes back. Like if they go control out delete, you know, go to the task manager. If they kill it, it will come. It will just come right back up. So you want to make sure it totally hides stuff from Explorer and related files in Explorer in case they try searching for it. Like you know, if they search like dark comment or something, it won't pop up. Make sure you. It totally hides the uh, sub the subfolder, so they can't find it in case they try searching for it anyways. Uh, these I wouldn't recommend doing unless you have like a really good encryptor or something, because most antiviruses detect this from rats really fast. I wouldn't recommend using them. After that, you want to go ahead and hit keylogger. Make sure this is checkmarked. So uh, basically, it does a keylogger. You know, when you're offline, it'll just when you come back online, it'll have still have saved keylogs. 
You also send the logs via FTP, so you always get them if you really want to, but you don't have to. Uh, you can set that up, you can figure that out, you can use Google, it's not that hard. Host files, you can skip, add plugins, you can skip, file binary, you can skip, choose icon, you can skip. These You can use these if you want to, but I wouldn't recommend it. I recommend just getting your own file binder and icon changer. So once you get your whole settings all set up, you want to go ahead and basically build your server. You want to make sure this is no compression. It definitely, because uh, if you use one of these, uh, most uh, antiviruses detect this for some reason. I don't know why. I'm not, oh my god, I know everything about this. I'm just telling you how to set this up. Make sure this is checked if you want to save the profile for later, you know, to use on other servers just so you don't have to, you know, reset it up. Output, you can put default.exe, but you can use any of these. Like, if you're making a screensaver, you know, you can bind it to a screensaver, you can just put that. Uh, I use .exe mostly because I do for game hacks. I make sure, you know, I bind my server to the game hack or injection tool so they open it up and bam. And then just hit build the stub and I'll build it. And once it's done, it's usually put into a folder of your choice. I'm not sure. The default, I believe, is into the DC folder, dark comment folder, wherever you put it. And you basically got your server set up. And um, in the next video tutorial, I'll show you how to actually use the rat on people. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. See ya.